a woman who chose not to be named, was recorded screaming at Trader Joe's employees in North Hollywood, California, upon being asked to wear a mask. In June of 2020, cell phone footage from other customers would show the woman, identified as a Los Angeles resident, throwing her shopping basket and lashing out at the workers, at one point calling them democratic pigs. She hurled insults at other shoppers who'd confronted her and also claimed that her doctor didn't allow her to wear a mask. She added that by harassing her into doing so, the others were in violation of federal law. She then angrily brushed off employees and left the store. When interviewed by a media outlet, she didn't elaborate on her medical condition but claimed that her tirade was sparked by a customer who'd begun to insult her for not complying with the statewide mandate. In July of 2021, Ijima Yukenta was visiting a Victoria's Secret store at a mall in Milburn, New Jersey. Yukenta, a woman of Nigerian descent, was trying to redeem a coupon for free panties when she got involved in an altercation with a white woman named Abigail Elphick. While they were near the cash register, the latter allegedly nudged Yukenta, who started recording her. As the encounter escalated, Elphick attempted to slap the phone out of Yukenta's hand and then suffered a breakdown in front of her. Upon realizing she was being filmed, she started crying and assumed a squatting position, begging not to be recorded. Yukenta told workers at the store to get security because the other woman had tried to charge her, while Elphick started screaming that she was being threatened before eventually lying motionless, face down on the floor, using her purse as a pillow. The first video ended with a store worker helping Yukenta with her purchase. As she told the white woman, by Karen, a second clip would show Elphick convulsing on the floor while pointing at Yukenta, screaming that she was recording her. The former then chased her around the store to get her to stop filming, which Yukenta didn't desist from doing, arguing that the footage was for her protection in front of the authorities. Elphick ultimately called the police. She'd later admit to officers of having suffered a breakdown because she was afraid that if the video went viral, which it since has, she'd lose her job and apartment. Elphick dubbed the Victoria's Secret Karen by the media wasn't charged while Yukenta started a GoFundMe to seek legal help in the matter. The page has since generated over $100,000. In June of 2020, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Facebook user Alison Goodbaum uploaded a video of an unnamed maskless woman coughing on her <laughs> at a New York City bagel shop. The confrontation began when Goodbaum pointed out to an employee that the woman was coughing without covering her mouth and not wearing a face mask, as mandated by law. The woman in question overheard the complaint and began berating Goodbaum, claiming that she had COVID antibodies and that other customers should mind their business. She then proceeded to cough on Goodbaum and call her names. The Facebook user's anger was also directed at the bagel shop itself, as workers didn't check on her well-being and continued to serve the coffin patron. The video went viral on various social media platforms and generated outrage online with the woman in question subsequently dubbed Coffin Karen. She was identified as a former employee of Wheel Cornell Medicine, but her identity wasn't definitely confirmed at the time, as she'd taken steps towards removing her online presence. In her post, Goodbaum argued that within the context of the pandemic, the other woman's behavior could be considered assault. In February of 2021, a couple sitting courtside at an LA Lakers Atlanta Hawks game became embroiled in a verbal altercation with NBA superstar LeBron James. The couple, Juliana and Chris Carlos, and the basketball player reportedly traded insults. The dispute, according to 25-year-old Juliana, had started after James had cursed at her husband, a decade-long Hawk supporter. But other witnesses reported that the couple had been constantly heckling him. A video captured during the fourth quarter would show how Juliana then started screaming at James. As a result, both Juliana and Chris were escorted out of the stadium. In the aftermath, Juliana uploaded a profanity-laced video on Instagram which was directed at James, while the basketball player himself referred to her as Courtside Karen in a tweet, a nickname that stuck. The feud earned Juliana considerable media attention and, in its wake, she got a major boost to her Instagram follower account. However, she and Chris also became targets for online ridicule, with social media users commenting on everything from their appearance to the age difference between them. Juliana would subsequently apologize for her Instagram rant. Among the most infamous incidents to have been included in the Karen paradigm was a confrontation between Amy Cooper, 
a white woman walking her dog and Christian Cooper, no relation, an African-American bird watcher. It occurred in the Ramble, a western section of New York City's Central Park. On the morning of May the 25th of 2020, Amy was in an area of the park that required owners to keep their dogs on a leash. Christian asked her to comply with the rules, which she refused, to which the man by his own admission replied, Look, if you're going to do what you want, I'm going to do what I want, but you're not going to like it. He then proceeded to beckon her cocker spaniel with a dog treat. Christian began filming with his cell phone after Amy had screamed at him not to touch her dog. She approached him, pointed her finger in his face and demanded he stop recording while also telling him not to get close to her. She then proceeded to call 911 telling the operator to send the cops immediately because an African-American man was threatening her and her dog. The video ended with Amy leashing her dog and Christian thanking her for choosing to do so. Both of them had left by the time the police arrived at the scene. Christian's video went viral in the aftermath, amassing over 40 million views on Twitter alone. Amy's actions of falsely presenting herself to be in imminent danger were widely criticized. Her employers at Franklin Templeton, where she worked as head of insurance investment, fired her upon seeing the footage. The incident prompted a national conversation on how black and white Americans are seen and treated differently by the police, as well as on how many similar incidents that go undocumented result in the former being falsely accused. Amy was charged with filing a false police report, punishable with up to a year in jail, but the charges were dropped in February of 2021 after she completed a five-session educational and therapeutic program on racial identity. According to her own updates on the matter, she'd received death threats and was doxxed to the point that she had to leave the country. In the incident's wake, legislation first proposed in 2018 took effect in New York, making it a hate crime for people to falsely report criminal incidents based on someone's race, gender, or religion. In early 2021, Maya Ponsetto, whom the media nicknamed Soho Karen, was charged with attempted robbery, endangering the welfare of a child, attempted grand larceny, and attempted assault. The charges stem from an incident in the lobby of the Arlo Soho Hotel in New York City, which had taken place in December of 2020. 22-year-old Ponsetto entered the hotel and falsely accused Keon Harold Jr., aged 14, of stealing her iPhone, even though both he and his father, renowned jazz trumpeter Keon Harold Sr., had denied the allegations. Ponsetto attempted to tackle the child. The incident was captured on cell phone footage, with the hotel's manager seemingly supporting the woman without apparent grounds. It turned out that Ponsetto had mistakenly left her phone in an Uber and the driver later returned it to her. Harold Sr. would subsequently state that neither he nor his son was given a chance to be heard in the matter and that they'd been guilty then proven innocent. On January the 7th, the police arrested Ponsetto at her home in Ventura County, California, and during an initial court hearing, she interrupted a judge by asking to avoid jail time. Harold filed a lawsuit against the young woman for a violent incident of racial profiling, and in July of 2021, a grand jury also charged Ponsetto with having committed a hate crime. She pleaded not guilty, and the trial is ongoing. In December of 2019, in the town of Mildura, Australia, a woman by the name of Karen Ridge was charged with willfully damaging an Aboriginal flag belonging to her neighbor. An argument erupted as 48-year-old Ridge and another neighbor, Robert Vigors, started questioning the Aboriginal heritage of indigenous artist Robbie Wiramanda Knight, who'd raised the flag. Ridge was filmed by Knight trying to tear down the flag and failing, to which he replied, It's too strong for you, Karen. The ensuing viral video would feature the hashtag, hashtag too strong for you, Karen. In the footage, Vigors, aged 65, told Knight that he was making a mockery because he wasn't a true Aboriginal and that him claiming to be one made him laugh. In the aftermath, Vigors, the franchisee of two McDonald's outlets, lost control of the businesses as the parent company deemed he should no longer be involved. The charges against him and Ridge were ultimately dropped. The weekend after the viral video incident, hundreds gathered at an anti-racism rally in Mildura. On April the 7th of 2021, a Texas school board candidate was kicked out of a Nordstrom rack in Austin after refusing to wear a face mask inside the store. It was reported that the unruly woman, later named as Cara Bell, had been asked multiple times by the store's employees to put on a face covering 
In accordance with Nordstrom's policies and the mandates in effect at the time, Bell repeatedly ignored the workers' requests reportedly indicating that she was exempted from wearing a face mask because of a medical condition. The woman allegedly pushed an employee to the side aggressively in order to gain access to one of the store's dressing rooms, and the police were subsequently called to the scene. Bell then began shouting hysterically at members of law enforcement on the sidewalk outside the store, as was captured by the responding officer's body cams. The woman alleged that she'd been the one assaulted by one of the Nordstrom employees and suggested that she'd been targeted because of her race. Bell continued to argue with the officers and refused to identify herself several times. At one point, she attempted to walk away, but was informed that she was being detained and wasn't allowed to leave the area. Shortly after the woman's incensed tirade had begun to abate, the officers placed her in handcuffs. Bell was reportedly issued an assault citation, which is a Class C misdemeanor, punishable by a fine of up to $500. In the aftermath of the incident, the video of her arrest went viral on social media, leading to Bell being labeled a Karen on steroids. Texas woman Laura K. Lewis was taken into custody for harassing a group of teenagers at a skate park in Austin on August the 18th of 2020. As was captured on video by witnesses, the barefooted woman had initially approached the skaters and berated them for unknown reasons. At one point, she got close to one of the teens and aggressively shoved him. Another skater responded by dumping a jug of water on Lewis's head, causing the situation to escalate considerably. Lewis was shown attempting to take the water jug away from the teenager before kicking him with her bare feet repeatedly. A female bystander then stepped in and knocked the woman over a nearby ledge. Shortly thereafter, police officers arrived at the scene and, having witnessed part of the altercation themselves, took Lewis into custody. The social media dubbed Karen claimed that she'd actually been the one victimized by the teenagers, whom she alleged had stolen her purse. It was later reported that Lewis had been charged with assault by contact following her arrest. Two Georgia women were arrested before a Gwinnett County School Board meeting that took place on November the 18th of 2021. The detainees were later identified as Snellville resident Karen Perkle and Brenda Stewart of Suwanee. The Gwinnett Daily Post reported that Perkle had been prohibited from entering Gwinnett County Public School property following a confrontation over face masks at a previous board meeting in October. The aptly named Karen attempted to attend the meeting on November the 18th in defiance of the police order issued against her and was consequently charged with criminal trespass. Stewart was reportedly stopped by officers at the school after she'd set off a metal detector during a security screening. Her bag was subsequently searched, at which point a pair of scissors was discovered inside. Upon being told she wasn't allowed to bring the scissors into the meeting, Stewart attempted to snatch them out of the officer's grasp and a brief struggle ensued. She was later taken into custody and charged with obstruction of a police officer. A member of the United States Navy was assaulted by a middle-aged woman at a pizza shop in Berlin, Connecticut, on September the 11th of 2021. According to a police report, the incident occurred shortly before 10 p.m. when Laurie Desjardins, aged 45, accused a man in military fatigues of stolen valor. She reportedly asserted that the man's military ID was fake, then proceeded to take out her own dependent military ID and insisted that it was what a valid, officially issued identification card should look like. During the course of her outburst, the brunt of which was caught on video and widely shared on social media later on, Desjardins called the man disgusting. As she grew progressively angrier, she grabbed the hat off his head and tossed it to the ground. In one final attempt to get the serviceman to leave the establishment, Desjardins rushed towards him and slapped him in the left side of his face. A few days later, the woman reportedly turned herself into the police, whereupon she was charged with third-degree assault and second-degree breach of peace. The man, whom Desjardins had accused of wearing a fake Navy uniform, was later identified as Sean Nolte Jr., a volunteer firefighter, who was also serving as a submarine electronics fire control technician for the U.S. Navy in Groton at the time of the incident. On November the 24th of 2021, Texas resident Rossi Dennis brandished a firearm during an argument in the parking lot of an HEB supermarket in Corpus Christi. According to local police, the 60-year-old woman had confronted another female shopper over a parking space to which she'd felt entitled. During the course of the heated interaction, which was captured on the victim's cell phone, Dennis was shown shouting into the driver's side window of the woman's vehicle in the presence of her six-month-old child. 
In an effort to intimidate the other shopper into relinquishing the space, Dennis ultimately resorted to pulling out a handgun and threatening to shoot her. When Corpus Christi police officers arrived a short time later, the armed woman had already left. But eyewitnesses confirmed that she'd pointed a weapon in the victim's direction. Investigators used the driver's recording of the incident to positively identify Dennis as the perpetrator. She was reportedly taken into custody four days later and booked into the city detention center on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Her bond was set at $60,000. An Australian woman was nicknamed Bunnings Karen by internet users after she'd filmed herself admonishing staff members at a Bunnings warehouse store in the Melbourne suburb of Narwarren in July of 2020. As shown in the video, 42-year-old Kerry Nash accused the store's employees of violating her human rights after they'd politely requested that she put on a face mask. When Nash eventually left the store, she was met by members of local law enforcement who'd been notified of the situation. She resisted the officer's attempts to place her in handcuffs and was later released from custody after claiming that she had a medical exemption that precluded her from wearing a face covering. Nash later posted the video recording of her berating the Bunnings staff to social media, which led to her facing widespread criticism for her disorderly behavior. The woman, a former iSelect sales consultant, announced her intention of suing the police for how they treated her, although, as of the latest updates on the matter, it wasn't clear whether such legal action was ever taken. In December of 2021, a woman on board a Delta Airlines flight from Tampa Bay to Atlanta was recorded attacking a fellow passenger for not wearing a face mask. The viral video showed 51-year-old Patricia Cornwall standing in the aisle of the plane and unloading an expletive-laden tirade at a seated male passenger. As many who viewed the video in the aftermath were quick to point out, Cornwall's outburst was rather ironic given that her own mask was pulled down under her nose and mouth. As her verbal abuse continued, the woman also reportedly struck the other passenger in the head and spat on him, prompting crew members to restrain and escort her to the other end of the cabin. The flight landed at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport at 6.10 p.m. The police were notified of the mid-air disturbance Cornwall had caused, and they subsequently detained the woman at the airport. She was then relocated to the domestic Atlanta police precinct, where she was taken into the custody of FBI agents. In the wake of the incident, it emerged that Cornwall, a former NFL cheerleader, had had other recent run-ins with the law. About a month prior to the episode on the Delta flight, she'd reportedly crashed her car into a tree in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, while she was intoxicated. Cornwall was consequently charged with the DUI and she ultimately faced federal assault charges as well, in connection to the incident on the plane. On July the 1st of 2020, Tekalia Hill and her daughter, Michaela Green, were involved in an alarming altercation with a woman outside of Chipotle in Orion Township, Michigan. As 15-year-old Green would later tell the Detroit News, she was walking into the restaurant at about 6 p.m. when the woman identified as Jillian Wustenberg bumped into her seemingly on purpose. Green reacted to Wustenberg's carelessness by saying, excuse you, and asking for an apology, to which the middle-aged woman took particular exception. She began berating the teen for purportedly invading her personal space. Hill came over to defend her daughter and the shouting match then escalated in intensity. Wustenberg's husband began yelling at the mother and daughter as well, and Hill reportedly accused the couple of being racist. The Wustenbergs eventually returned to their vehicle and tensions began to die down. However, they almost ran over Hill while backing out of their parking space, prompting her to slap the car's rear to get them to stop. It was at that point that Wustenberg jumped out of the vehicle and brandished a firearm, pointing it directly at Hill and Green while ordering them to keep their distance. She then got back in the car and the couple left the scene. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office quickly tracked down the Wustenbergs and took them into custody on charges of felonious assault. The initial interaction between Green and Wustenberg wasn't recorded. The ensuing altercation, including the moment the gun was pulled, was caught on video. The footage promptly went viral in the incident's aftermath, with many viewers commenting that Wustenberg was a quintessential example of the Karen stereotype. In the late evening hours of August the 16th of 2019, 
The police in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, heard a woman screaming loudly in the area of 143 Rehoboth Avenue. Officers subsequently encountered 22-year-old Kylie Dippery, who was said to have been in hysterics because she'd gotten separated from her boyfriend. Law enforcement helped reunite the young woman with her boyfriend at a nearby hotel. Then a few minutes later, the police were called back to the hotel after Dippery had begun screeching yet again. It was subsequently reported that she simply would not stop screaming and began to disturb several other hotel guests, at which point the officers took her into custody. As Dippery was being led into a patrol car, she allegedly became combative, kicking an officer in the leg and continuing her incessant yelling. After finally being restrained, Dippery reportedly vomited in the police cruiser and urinated on the floor of the holding area at the Rehoboth Beach Police Department. The Pennsylvania resident was booked on charges of resisting arrest with force or violence, offensive touching of a law enforcement officer, disorderly conduct and creating a physically offensive condition. She was held at the Sussex Correctional Institution on $3,200 secured bail. Florida woman Tina Kindred was tased and arrested by Ocala law enforcement after having thrown a tantrum in the nude at a pair of local restaurants on June the 4th of 2021. The 53-year-old was caught on video smashing glass bottles and breaking other merchandise while unclothed at both a Mojo Grill and Outback in the Marion County city. Employees and other diners at the eateries pleaded with Kindred to stop as she wreaked havoc, destroying seemingly everything she could get her hands on while screaming incoherently. An Ocala police officer was eventually called to the outback, where he approached the woman and attempted to calm her down. Kindred instead proceeded to launch glass bottles at the officer, who shouted at her to get on the ground after one of them hit him in the arm. The woman refused to comply, however, at which point the policeman deployed his taser to subdue her. She was consequently taken into custody on charges of aggravated battery on law enforcement and felony criminal mischief. In the wake of the incident, it emerged that Kindred had been denied service at Bojo Grill before entering both restaurants in search of revenge. On the night of March the 10th of 2022, an elderly New Yorker was tragically killed as a result of an unprovoked attack in the city's Chelsea neighborhood. The victim, a beloved former voice coach named Barbara Maya Gustern, had been left critically injured after a red-headed woman approached her on the sidewalk along West 28th Street and shoved her to the ground from behind. 87-year-old Gustern's skull violently collided with the concrete below, and she remained hospitalized for about five days before ultimately succumbing to her head wound. The NYPD used surveillance footage to identify Gustern's attacker as Lauren Pazienza, who was arrested on two counts of second-degree assault. Following the victim's death, Pazienza also reportedly faced a manslaughter charge. Investigators subsequently determined that on the night of the deadly incident, Pazienza had flown into a rage after she and her fiancé were asked to leave nearby Chelsea Park because it was after closing time. The woman was alleged to have been slightly intoxicated after having consumed a few glasses of wine to celebrate their upcoming wedding. Her drunken tantrum continued after she allegedly threw food at her partner and crossed the street, at which point she shoved Gustern, with whom she had no prior association, in the immediate aftermath, Pazienza reportedly deleted her social media accounts, hid her cell phone and fled to her parents' Long Island home, but was eventually tracked down by the authorities and thrown in jail. She was released on a $500,000 bond but later rearrested after being deemed a serious flight risk. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office extended multiple plea deal offers to Pazienza, all of which she turned down, ensuring her case would go to trial. The court proceedings were scheduled to begin in October of 2022. A young pregnant woman was arrested for throwing a violent tantrum at a McDonald's in Lakeland, Florida. On May the 19th of 2022, according to the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the incident began at around 5.30 p.m. when 22-year-old Tianis Jones arrived at the restaurant to pick up an order she'd placed online earlier. She proceeded through the drive through line but was reportedly told that there had been an error with her food. The employees asked her to wait at the third drive through window while the mistake was being corrected. But Jones instead parked her vehicle and stormed inside to confront the workers face to face. Roughly a minute into the ensuing interaction, Jones allegedly became violent, striking a small plastic sign and several bottles in the direction of the employees. Shortly thereafter, one of the young woman's relatives entered the restaurant and attempted to calm her down. 
Her outburst continued for about 10 minutes and resulted in approximately $100 worth of damages. Jones eventually dialed 911 to report that the McDonald's had tried to cheat her out of her money and officers were subsequently dispatched to the scene. Before their arrival, however, Jones's meltdown culminated with the young woman lifting up her shirt to expose her midriff to the workers before finally agreeing to leave. The following day, she was taken into police custody on charges of burglary with assault, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, and misuse of 911. Staffers from the WUSA 9 news station in Washington, D.C. went to a house in the city's southeast region to cover a hostage situation that unfolded in the early hours of October the 30th of 2013. Reporter Bruce Johnson and his photographer Daniel Gill were speaking with nearby residents when a woman watching from the second floor window of the house they were covering began yelling at them to leave. They refused to comply with her demands, at which point the unidentified woman became incensed and went down to the street to confront them. The news crew contended that they were under no obligation to leave as they were standing on a public street. But the woman continued to shout at them before spraying mace in their general direction. She then struck both Johnson and Gill with one punch and knocked over the latter's video camera. To avoid further violence, the news crew left the area. While speaking about the incident later on, Johnson indicated that he wasn't sure whether the woman had been involved in the reported hostage situation, but added, it was clear she'd been under a lot of stress. As reported by multiple news outlets in April of 2017, California woman Anna Storelli was waiting in line at a restaurant in Santa Monica when she became enraged by a couple sitting nearby. Storelli's meltdown was captured in a seven-minute video, during which she was shown yelling at a man and woman for allegedly kissing in public. She proceeded to launch an expletive-laden tirade at the couple, claiming that their public display of affection was making her and others feel uncomfortable. The man involved in the interaction later clarified that he'd only kissed his girlfriend on the forehead in the moments leading up to Storelli's outburst. The latter reportedly accused the young woman of being an escort before demanding a refund from the restaurant and threatening to have the cashier fired for their perceived mistreatment of her. Upon the video's release on social media, Storelli was widely ridiculed for her behavior, with many considering her reaction to the couple's kiss to have been an extreme overreaction. Law enforcement in Minneapolis, Minnesota received reports of a mid-air meltdown by a pair of unruly airplane passengers on December the 28th of 2016. It was reported that roughly an hour after Delta Flight 2565 had taken off from the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport, Blake A. Fleissig and his girlfriend, Anna C. Kuzman, had gotten into an altercation with others on board the aircraft. It started after the latter had allegedly left her seat to use the bathroom. She had done so within moments of the plane being airborne, which was prohibited by air travel regulations. A flight attendant requested that she return to her seat, at which point she became aggressive and created a disruption in the cabin. Kuzman and Fleissig reportedly got so belligerent that the pilots were forced to divert the Los Angeles-bound flight back to the airport from which it had departed. The aircraft was met by Minneapolis police officers who took the two suspects into custody. As Fleissig was being escorted off the plane, he allegedly punched another passenger, prompting the officers to tackle him to the ground. Both Fleissig and Kuzman were initially charged with disorderly conduct, although it was reported that the former, who was the vice president of Citibank, had the charges against him dropped by prosecutors. Shortly after 10 p.m. on January the 3rd of 2017, Illinois woman Jessica Mims entered a Subway restaurant in Evergreen Park and requested to use the restroom. The 23-year-old subsequently left without ordering any food. However, a short time later, she reportedly returned and asked to go back into the bathroom to look for money she'd purportedly left behind on accident. A store employee accompanied Mims to search for the misplaced cash, which they couldn't find. The young woman's behavior then became erratic and she accused the unnamed worker of having taken the money she'd lost. The situation ultimately devolved into a physical altercation between the two. Mims's public meltdown began with her pepper spraying the worker and progressed to her exiting the restaurant and smashing one of its windows. The young woman was consequently arrested and charged with unlawful use of a weapon and criminal damage to property. It subsequently emerged that Mims, who suffered from schizophrenia and depression, hadn't been taking her prescribed medication at the time of her outburst. Well, I, I want to... Just give me a second. Okay. No, I want to talk to you. Okay. I know, I will. Just give me a second. Well, why do you need the door closed? Have you been drinking? Alcohol? No. I 
need my eyes closed. Please. Why do you need your eyes closed? Because I can't heal them anything else. You can't what? Hear them anything else. You can't hear them? Yeah. You can't hear your eyes. I can't hear my ID. You can't hear, you don't need to hear your ID. I don't need to hear my ID, I just need to know that it's there. Law enforcement in Weston, Wisconsin, responded to reports of a woman passed out in her car near a local convenience store. On April the 25th of 2022, customers had reportedly alerted the authorities out of concern that the woman who was subsequently identified as 18-year-old Anna Kostecki had gotten into an accident. During their first interactions with her, officers noticed that she smelled of intoxicants and slurred her speech. Body cam footage of what followed was uploaded to the YouTube channel Code Blue Cam, where it was viewed over 5 million times. Kostecki refused to present her ID to officers or get out of her car. The teen rambled while looking through her purse at one point saying that she needed to close her eyes because she otherwise couldn't hear her ID. Law enforcement offered to help her and give her a ride home, but as the conversation progressed, the teen started wailing incoherently. She cursed and insulted the officer interviewing her, repeatedly ordering him to go look for her sister. She then tried to close her car door on him several times before striking him in the genital region. Kostecki remained combative as she was pulled out of her car and handcuffed. She kept screaming and kicking at officers who eventually placed her in the back of their patrol car. Once the doors were closed, Kostecki started banging her head on the divider and kicking the seat. She was charged with battery on a police officer, resisting arrest, and was also given a citation for underage drinking. On September the 18th of 2022, police in Cheshire, England, were called to a home in witness by the neighbors of Rebecca Cowan. The 28-year-old who was severely intoxicated at the time was found by two officers at around 4 a.m. outside her home. She was locked out with her three young daughters and shouting, get out of my house, at the empty property as the children sobbed in the street. None of them were appropriately dressed for the cold morning weather, and the officers became concerned for their well-being. They offered to help and eventually located Cowan's key. One of them asked to enter the woman's house to ensure that they were all right. Cowan refused and started making threats while shouting at the police to get off her property. As the officers helped her inside, she kicked one of them and tried to bite the other in the arm and wrist in front of her children. Both officers emerged without injuries from the incident, which ended with Cowan's arrest. Once in custody, she admitted to the police that she became violent when drinking. She had previously been given a nine-month jail sentence at Liverpool Crown Court, suspended for 12 months for assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Cowan was only three days from the end of her suspended sentence when she attacked the officers. She admitted assault and given her history of violence, was ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. Two members of the Kennedy dynasty were arrested in August of 2017 at a rental home near the family's famed Hyannis Port compound in Massachusetts. Law enforcement were called to the address at around 1 a.m. following a noise complaint from neighbors about a raging party that had involved loud music and fireworks. Officers from the Barnstable Police Department were met by 23-year-old Caroline Summer Rose Kennedy, granddaughter of assassinated former New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy. According to an arrest report, she cursed at the police and stuck her tongue out at them. While slurring her words, Caroline told an officer, I went to Brown and I'm a teacher, sweetheart. She refused to take a breathalyzer, stating that she knew she was drunk. Caroline's father and Robert Kennedy's ninth son, Max, had responded when asked who was in charge of the party and proceeded to display similarly brattish behavior. The inebriated 52-year-old screamed at the police, jabbed his finger into an officer's chest and smashed a wall cabinet containing glass valuables. After Max had been handcuffed and placed in the back of a police cruiser, Caroline threw herself against the vehicle and flung its doors open. Both Kennedys were taken into custody for disorderly conduct. The charge against Max was dismissed in lieu of a $150 fine, while Caroline's was to be dropped as well after she agreed to follow a counseling program that included community service. 
In 2019, Australian teenager Chloe Shannon June Power Leo faced a mandatory sentence of six months in jail following what was deemed an absolutely disgusting attack on a police officer. 18-year-old Power Leo had been approached by law enforcement in Mandura in June of 2018. She was severely intoxicated and failed to provide any details when asked by officers. She was arrested but subsequently refused to leave the police vehicle, becoming very violent. As Officer Courtney Hay was struggling with her, Power Leo leaned forward and sank her teeth into her neck. The deep bite instantly drew blood. In November, the teen pleaded guilty to a slew of charges for which she was ultimately sentenced to 12 months in prison, at least half of which she'd have to serve before being eligible for parole. On February the 7th of 2015, two women were involved in a violent altercation at a Walmart in Deep Park, Texas. The argument between Alice Keener and Jessica Albitz had reportedly started a day earlier, while the former was working at the Jackson Hewitt kiosk inside the store. Tax worker Keener had reportedly insulted Albitz's husband, but she'd later claim it was a misunderstanding and that she'd made a joke during a conversation with a co-worker. When Albitz returned to the store, she and Keener got into each other's face and traded insults in a video-recorded incident. Then as tensions escalated, 37-year-old Albitz leaned back and headbutted the other woman. Both then ended up on the ground where they traded blows and pulled on each other's hair. The fight, footage of which subsequently went viral, lasted only about a minute. As customers intervened to separate the women, Keena, a grandmother of four, initially declined to press charges, but ultimately decided to do so after a dentist's evaluation concluded the headbutt had loosened her front teeth. Albitz was arrested for misdemeanor assault. Both women apologized and said they regretted their actions in the aftermath, with Keena telling a media outlet, I forgive her, I forgive myself, I'm done with it. Come back again. Come back again. Bring her back again. What's up? I believe I heard you saying to. Yes, I did. I'm not going to. I, I believe you. Did you say? Yes, sir. Me? Actually, I did. Did you say that? Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you did say that? I'm not I find you in direct that. criminal contempt. 30 days in the county jail. In early February of 2013, teenager Penelope Soto was brought before a judge in Miami Dade County, Florida after she'd been arrested for Xanax possession. Soto smiled, laughed, and stroked her hair throughout the proceedings as she discussed the offense with Judge Jorge Rodriguez Chomat in a video recorded hearing. For the purpose of setting the 18-year-old's bond, the judge asked her about the value of her jewelry and other assets. She replied that her jewelry was worth Rick Ross money, a reference to the South Florida rapper, which the judge didn't seem to understand. Rodriguez Chomat urged her to take the matter seriously, telling her, we are not in a club. The judge set her bond at $5,000, telling her bye-bye, to which Soto laughed and replied, adios. Annoyed by her attitude, Rodriguez Chomat called her back and raised the bond to $10,000, prompting a gasping reaction from 18-year-old Soto, who asked him if he was serious. He responded affirmatively and reported with her previous adios, prompting laughter to erupt in the courtroom. As Soto walked away, she gave the judge the middle finger and cursed at him. Rodriguez Chomat called her back once more and sentenced her to 30 days in jail for contempt of court. The clip of their interaction subsequently went viral. Soto tearfully apologized to the judge a few days later, describing her behavior as very irrational. She also admitted to having taken two Xanax on the day of her arrest. The judge dropped the contempt sentence, taking into account Soto's apology, her first-time offender status, her admission to Xanax abuse, and her willingness to overcome her addiction by attending a drug treatment program. On December the 16th of 2014, Oklahoma woman Tia Ann Uzen was reportedly making a scene at the Oklahoma County Court Clerk's Office. As witnesses later told the police, 25-year-old Uten had been yelling, swearing, and gesturing to employees. She had her two-year-old son in tow and had placed him on a counter as the scene unfolded. When deputies arrived at the scene, Uten became confrontational and refused to leave the premises. While speaking to law enforcement, she turned to her child and said, that's right, son, be a man and kill the police. The boy reportedly fell from the counter moments later but was caught by one of the officers. 
Uten was arrested on complaints of assault and battery on an officer, obstructing an officer, and disturbing the peace. Her son was consequently placed in protective custody with the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. New Mexico woman Amanda Gonzalez was charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and the felony count of criminal damage to property on November the 15th of 2020. At around 7 a.m., law enforcement in Las Cruces were called to a home along the thousand block of Chittamanjo Road. 25-year-old Gonzalez had driven to the property to confront her ex, who was there with his new girlfriend. The couple and a female roommate awoke to the sound of pounding on the window. They went outside and were met by an enraged Gonzalez, who proceeded to punch her ex before being pushed to the ground. That's what I needed, the young woman reportedly replied. The trio headed back after the altercation, but Gonzalez then accelerated towards the house and rammed her vehicle into it. Near the front door, her ex, his girlfriend, and the roommate re-emerged and were forced to jump to safety when Gonzalez drove towards them. She crashed into the house once more, leaving a gaping hole in its side and the Nissan with heavy damage to its front. The jilted woman then reversed into a nearby car but ended up stranding the Nissan on rock landscaping in front of the home. Unable to drive away, she tried to flee on foot but was soon taken into the custody of responding law enforcement. Malibu woman Kashmir Duran faced up to six years in prison in the fall of 2020 after attacking a security guard in the parking lot of a pavilion supermarket in West Hollywood, California. In October, 37-year-old Duran was having a heated argument with her father when security guard Natasha Lawson tried to intervene. Duran then reoriented her rage towards the woman and threw a glass water bottle at her. A physical struggle ensued between them during which Duran caught Lawson's finger in her mouth and forcefully bit into it, causing bleeding. The former also repeatedly launched racially charged epithets at the black security guard. The fight ended up with both of them wrestling on the ground before they were eventually separated. A portion of the altercation was captured on cell phone video by a bystander. As Duran's father tried driving away, with her as a passenger in the car, their path was blocked by staff and customers. In a video posted to YouTube, Duran was then seen throwing dog food at other black store staff and again using the N-word. She was arrested and charged with one felony count each of assault with a deadly weapon and assault by means of force likely to produce great bodily injury, as well as one misdemeanor charge of violation of civil rights. As of the latest information available to the media, Duran had pleaded not guilty. A duo faced multiple charges in connection to an attack on a security guard at a Macy's in Danbury, Connecticut. In June of 2016, Douglas Rollman and Gina Peccia, both in their 20s and from New York, were observed trying to shoplift items from the store. Law enforcement was alerted, but before they arrived at the scene, the store's security guard, whose identity wasn't released, tried to handcuff Rollman. It was then that Peccia became aggressive and tried to strangle the guard in the ensuing struggle. Rollman kicked him in the abdomen before he and his accomplice fled. The police caught up with them in the parking lot where they found Rollman still wearing the cuffs on one of his wrists and with a stolen pair of men's jeans worth less than $50 in his possession. The couple were taken into custody and each charged with several counts of robbery, larceny and assault with an added third degree strangulation charge for Peccia. In August of 2022, Morgan Hickman of West Palm Beach, Florida, walked out the front doors of the Boca Regional Hospital. Staff then requested that a security guard go outside and ask her to return. The unnamed man found her talking to a construction worker, whom she'd asked for a cigarette. When the guard told 23-year-old Hickman that the nursing staff was ready for her, the woman screamed that she wouldn't move until she got a cigarette. Then as she and the guard were standing close to each other, she suddenly threw a punch at him. They went to the ground, but the man was able to control Hickman and bring her to her feet. She kept trying to leave and became more agitated upon seeing Boca Raton police. She eventually threw her phone at another uniformed hospital security officer, hitting him in the lip. Hickman was arrested and booked into Palm Beach County Jail on the morning of August the 9th on two felony counts of battery on a licensed security guard. While in custody, she admitted to having hit the security guard in the face and claimed to have done so because he wasn't listening to her, adding that she'd only wanted a cigarette. Thanks for watching. Would you rather work as a rodeo clown or as a security guard during a riot? Let us know in the comments section below.
Alexandra Jane Jackson, daughter of country music icon Alan Jackson, was arrested in Nashville, Tennessee in August of 2013. Local police had observed a Range Rover speeding and conducted a traffic stop. 20-year-old Jackson, who was in the passenger seat, became irate as an officer spoke to the SUV's driver. She got out and her anger grew when the officer requested that she return to the car. Upon being warned that failure to follow the command would result in her arrest, Jackson, who appeared to be intoxicated at the time, struck the officer in the chest. She then resisted arrest to such an extent that the officer had to call for backup. After she was finally restrained, Jackson told the arresting officer that her father would do anything she wanted, but was promptly warned about any bribery attempt. She was charged with assault, underage drinking, and resisting arrest. Jackson eventually took a plea deal that saw her perform community service as well as take alcohol safety and anger management courses. University of Kentucky student Sophia Rosen was arrested following a drunken, racially charged, verbal tirade directed towards a fellow student in the early hours of November the 6th of 2022. The 22-year-old business and marketing major was visibly intoxicated when she stumbled into one of the dorms on the university's Lexington campus. Student Kyla Spring, who was working at the front desk that night, attempted to restrain Rosen from getting on the elevator because she didn't have an ID card with her. The inebriated young woman then called Spring a racial slur and kicked her in the stomach. As was captured on cell phone video, Rosen subsequently tried to run the student employee over with a shopping cart she found in the lobby before biting another student present at the scene. A campus police officer arrived a short time later and placed Rosen in handcuffs as she continued to hurl racial insults at Spring and her friend. Facing charges of intoxication in a public place, third-degree assault on a police officer, fourth-degree assault and second-degree disorderly conduct, she was booked at the Fayette County Detention Center on a $10,000 bond. In the aftermath of her outburst, which went viral on social media, Rosen was fired from her job at Dillard's department store, and many called for her to be expelled from the university. A Texas woman was arrested for verbally and physically assaulting a group of Indian women in a parking lot in Plano on August the 24th of 2022. According to local police, Badisha Rudra and her friends had just exited the Six Divines restaurant and began exchanging goodbyes in their native tongue when they were approached by Esmeralda Upton. In a video that subsequently went viral on social media, Upton was shown berating the women while using racial slurs and shouting for them to go back to India. The unhinged woman also allegedly threatened to shoot them multiple times, indicating that she had a firearm in her vehicle. At one point, she punched Rudra's wrist forcefully while attempting to make contact with her face. Upton wasn't immediately taken into police custody because the criminal offenses didn't occur in the presence of the responding patrol officers. She was, however, arrested the following day and reportedly faced charges of assault and making threats. After posting her $10,000 bond, Upton was released, pending the continuation of the case's legal proceedings. In the meantime, the woman was sued by Rudra, who claimed that the incident had traumatized her and caused her emotional distress. On October the 19th of 2018, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department in North Carolina received multiple 911 calls from someone claiming that two people were attempting to break into residences in the 8800 block of Fairview Road. Responding officers were unable to locate the caller identified as 51-year-old Susan Westwood. They did, however, encounter the two women Westwood had falsely accused of wrongdoing, sisters Lisa and Mary Garris. The latter two had begun recording Westwood as she drunkenly ranted at them about how they shouldn't be loitering in the parking lot. Mary explained that they were trying to get in touch with AAA because their car wouldn't start, but the intoxicated woman continued berating them, at certain points hurling racially degrading remarks at them. When the Garrises uploaded a video clip online, it garnered widespread attention, with Westwood derisively being dubbed South Park Susan. She was also terminated from her job at Spectrum Enterprise, which stated that the incident was a blatant violation 
of the company's code of conduct and clearly disregards the company's commitment to inclusion and respectful behavior. Local police subsequently issued a warrant for Westwood's arrest on a charge of misuse of the 911 system. She turned herself in shortly thereafter. In the summer of 2019, Westwood entered a guilty plea to 911 misuse as well as two counts of simple battery. She was consequently sentenced to 12 months of unsupervised probation and was also ordered to participate in community support meetings as well as an aftercare alcohol program. Florida teen Tabitha Raitano was taken into police custody on July the 29th of 2018 for allegedly driving drunk and resisting arrest. The case subsequently garnered international headlines due to the 19-year-old's mugshots in which she flashed a smile and playfully stuck her tongue out for the camera. The young woman pleaded not guilty to charges of disorderly intoxication, battery, and resisting an officer with violence to the officer's person. She was scheduled to appear in court the following month, although it's unclear how her case's legal proceedings ultimately played out. Raitano's high-spirited mugshots were widely likened to those of former California gangster Jeremy Meeks. The latter sparked up a career as a model and actor after the Stockton Police Department posted his mugshot on social media leading to him being labeled the world's hottest felon. In the spring of 2014, video footage of a topless woman going berserk inside a Pinellas Park McDonald's went viral on social media. Subsequent reports identified the Florida resident as 41-year-old Sandra Suarez, who'd walked into the fast food restaurant on 66th Street North wearing only a bikini bottom. The store's employees requested that she put on more clothing, but she refused and instead proceeded to become increasingly irate and belligerent. At one point, Suarez walked behind the front counter and overturned the cash registers, an ice cream machine, display shelves, as well as other expensive equipment. The police later estimated that she'd caused more than $10,000 in total damage during the course of her outburst, which continued even after the arrival of law enforcement. Suarez reportedly took an aggressive stance and lunged at the responding officers before being handcuffed and restrained inside a patrol car. Upon being taken to Northside Hospital, the woman was examined to determine whether she might have been intoxicated. Doctors indicated that she had neither alcohol nor other drugs in her system at the time and officers subsequently noted that she may have mental health issues that contributed to her erratic behavior. Suarez was booked into the Pinellas County Jail on charges of criminal mischief and resisting arrest. On December the 12th of 2015, a Florida woman kicked a state police officer at a Deerfield Beach Department of Motor Vehicles after getting into a row with a department employee. Video shot by another DMV goer showed 31-year-old Eleanor Stern having a heated verbal argument with the unnamed employee at the counter. An officer was consequently called over to remove her from the building. Stern was seen on video kicking the officer, who then began to wrestle with her on the ground as she continued to attack him. He struggled to handcuff Stern as she thrashed uncontrollably on the ground. The enraged woman was able to get up and away for a moment as she screamed profanities and insults at the officer. He was eventually able to get a hold of her and remove her from the building. Stern was charged with resisting arrest but was released after posting a $100 bond. Ohio woman Sharice Helena Cleveland had her request to mix three McDonald's slushy flavors denied. On June the 14th of 2021, to which she responded by launching a rageful attack on the store's employees. The 44-year-old reportedly jumped behind the counter and threw food around as she attacked the workers. The wild incident was recorded by another customer, which provided local authorities with sufficient evidence to arrest Cleveland. The video which showed the woman berating the employees and daring witnesses to call the police before she eventually struck a manager went viral after being posted to social media in the aftermath. Cleveland was charged with two counts of misdemeanor assault and was released on a $1,000 bond. The arrest reportedly marked the second occasion in which she'd gotten into trouble with the law. In March of 2015, she'd been sentenced to two years in prison and three years of probation for felonious assault, kidnapping and disrupting public service. In connection to an incident the previous year in which 
she'd attacked her grandmother. In letters written to the judge presiding over her case, Cleveland attempted to justify her actions by stating, mental illness strongly runs in my family. She also insisted that she'd tried to be a good citizen and had maintained the same job for 16 years before her mother's death in 2014. In December of 2021, Cleveland was convicted of assault and consequently prohibited from making any form of contact with any of the employees involved in the slushy-related altercation. On January the 12th of 2020, former NASCAR driver Candice Musney became irate at manicurist Tiffany Nguyen for speaking in Vietnamese to a co-worker at a nail salon in Oklahoma City. 43-year-old Musney slapped Nguyen and demanded she use English while in the presence of customers. When a witness tried to call 911, the enraged woman allegedly snapped their phone away before pulling out a pocket knife. Nguyen fell to the ground to preserve herself and would later reveal that Musni tried to put the blade up to her throat several times. Upon the arrival of police, the assailant shifted her aggression towards one of the officers whom she physically attacked. Musni was consequently arrested on charges of assault with a dangerous weapon, resisting arrest and interfering with a 911 call. After being released on bail, the woman defended her actions during an interview. She stated that she'd felt her anger was justified because she was paying with American dollars and had asked her three times to stop speaking Vietnamese. On February the 17th, roughly a month after the incident, Musni was found dead in her Ski Island residence and police subsequently investigated the possibility of foul play. After an autopsy, however, the woman's cause of death was ruled as accidental drowning. Las Vegas salon manager Nui Annie Nyok Nguyen was fatally struck by a car in the parking lot of Crystal Nails and Spa on December the 29th of 2018. It was subsequently reported that 21-year-old Crystal Whipple had attempted to skip out on a $35 manicure bill claiming that she needed to retrieve the money from her car after her credit card had initially been rejected. After getting in her vehicle, however, the young woman started to drive away, at which point she was pursued by 51-year-old Nguyen. According to eyewitnesses, the suspect neglected to stop when Nguyen tried to get in front of the moving car. She instead accelerated, dragging the manager's body through the parking lot. The victim reportedly passed away as a result of the critical injuries she'd sustained in the violent collision. Whipple then abandoned the vehicle, a Chevy Camaro, she'd rented before fleeing from justice. A warrant was issued for her arrest and she was ultimately captured two weeks later by the FBI in Phoenix, Arizona. Whipple had allegedly been attempting to get to North Carolina. At the time of her arrest, she later pleaded guilty to second-degree murder as part of a deal, allowing her to avoid facing the potential consequences associated with her original charges of felony murder, burglary, and robbery. On February the 5th of 2021, the case's presiding judge, Tierra Jones, sentenced Whipple to 10 to 25 years behind bars. What was supposed to be a fun party at a friend's house on September the 14th 2014 in Orlando, Florida, turned into an award-winning female bodybuilder getting arrested after drinking too much. Then 24-year-old Danny Reardon, also known as Little Monster, for her crazy strength and ferocity, despite her five-foot height, is a pro competitor for the International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness. After having one too many drinks that night, she started acting belligerent. When her boyfriend of three years, Ian Schofield, tried to take her home, she tackled him and shattered the windshield of his truck with a single kick. She yelled at fellow partygoers and even hit multiple vehicles with plants that she ripped out of the ground. Despite her boyfriend's refusal of pressing charges, officers arrested her anyway. While in the back of the cop car, she banged her head repeatedly against the cage that separated her and the officers. Ultimately, she was charged with resisting arrest and battery.